Welcome everyone, my name is Michael Mills and welcome to this first in a series of videos that I'm going to be sending out over the next couple of weeks. Maybe you've already heard from me, uh, maybe you've listened to a few of our YouTube videos, but this series, it's going to be a little different and I know you're going to get a lot from them. They're great videos. There are two requests that I ask before we start. The first, like take off that hat where you say, I already know all this stuff. Wipe the slate clean for the next eight minutes or so. Because if you can hear what I'm going to share with you with an open mind, with open, with open eyes, like we call it Buddha mind, there's a chance I can help you actually take action where you've never been able to take action before. Second, um, I want you to put your focus right here, only here for the next few minutes. Put your phone down. Don't look at your emails. Don't think about the millions of things you need to do today. That, that's been your MO for a long time. And I want to show you how you can get to a place where all of that changes, where you can do what you love doing without the stress and pressure that consumes most of us entrepreneurs on a daily basis. Now, because you're watching this, I'm guessing you are a business owner. Um, that said, in this video, I'm going to share a story with you that I know is going to sound, I think, pretty familiar. One that is surely about someone you know. It might even be about you. The, uh, the lead character is someone who's decided that they no longer want to be told what to do, right? I don't want to be told what to do. They want to take control of things. They want to be their own boss. They want to make lots of money. They also probably want to make a difference in some way, and they want to get more of what they want from life. In fact, they've most likely already started along this path, but things didn't quite work out the way they would had imagined it would be. So let me sort of kill the suspense and get right to the point here. This, this lead character in this story, it's me. I graduated in college in 1979 with a degree in English and philosophy. Like, where's that going to get me, right? But with that, you can imagine that I had a pretty good time in college. Um, see, my dad, he was a business owner. And his plans were for me and my older brother to take over things. I mean, I had a totally sweet situation. Graduate, start work right away. But it's tough working for your dad. And my dad was, he was fairly young at the time. He wasn't planning on retiring anytime soon. So remember, I wanted control. Uh, long story short, I wasn't happy working in the business, and it was tough being in my early 20s and still being told what to do by my father. I wanted independence, I wanted excitement, I wanted control. Apple had just come out with the Apple IIe. Um, I don't know if you guys remember that, but it was a long time ago. So brash as I was, I hired a couple of programmers, created a software company, we were computerizing art galleries, and I moved the company to New York City. And I had an amazing time, man. I was young. I was invincible. I was going to be the next Bill Gates. I was going to retire early and drive around in a red Ferrari. Well, remember I said a moment ago, things didn't quite work out that way. Um, I was working 10 to 14 hours a day, sometimes seven days a week. And yeah, it was exciting. I was in my mid-20s, but it was stressful. It was exhausting. It was hard to get my employees to do anything I wanted them to do. My attitude at the time was, if I needed it done right, I was probably going to have to do it myself. So in 1993, I sold that company, and I didn't sell it for much. I, meant, I, I mean, I, who would ever want that job, grinding it out day after day after day? So I took some time to reflect. Um, Owning a business hadn't been as much fun as I'd imagined it would be. In fact, at that time, it, had, it was pretty frustrating and really not very profitable at all. I mean, how was I going to retire with a ton of cash in my pocket and a red Ferrari? Ferraris are pretty expensive, right? How was I even going to be able to live long enough to be able to retire? So then I read this book uh, by Michael Gerber called The E-Myth. Um, it made a lot of sense to me. It talked about the importance and value of having documented processes that could be used for hiring, training, managing employees so you could get them to do what you needed them to do. Consistently, reliably, time after time after time. I mean, what an amazing key concept. And it made so much sense to me 
that I created a consulting company delivering the eMyth Mastery program to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of companies. Now, we've worked with lawyers, with mortgage brokers, with chiropractors, really with every type of um, construction contractor, like HVAC guys, electrical plumbing contractors, landscaping contractors. We've worked with almost every type of business, and I can't tell you how often I hear, but my business is different. My business could never be process dependent. My business could never be systematized. But I did it myself and I had a consulting company. I mean, what could be more difficult to systematize than a consulting company? You see, when my son was in eighth grade, my wife was concerned that he was, he was little. And she was wondering, what could we do to help him grow up a little, to mature just a bit before he went to the local high school? This was a really big school. I mean, thousands of kids. Well, the answer, in 2004, we took a year off and traveled around the world. It was the most amazing thing I could have ever done in my life, and I would never have been able to do it had I not left behind all of the processes that everyone needed to be able to do what they needed to, to do. I mean, it was essentially calling in for the numbers, and through it all, 12 months later, I came back, and things were sort of pretty much humming along the way they needed to be humming along. I've seen so many business owners get stuck in this rut, just grinding it out, worried week after week after week, how are they ever going to make payroll? Or they're just so busy, they, they don't know when they're going to be able to have time with their family and kids, and you know they've got a baseball practice or a baseball game or a soccer game to get to. How am I going to get to that? It doesn't have to be this way. I know this. I've helped hundreds of business owners get to this place of freedom, and, and like I told you, I've done it myself. So let me offer you just a, a slightly different picture. Michael Gerber, the author of The E-Myth, once said, the only reason to own a business is to get more of what you want from life. Well, what he's saying is useful, and it's really powerful, but it's a big question. I mean, it's a daunting question to ask, what do you want from life? To make it easier, I'd say, what do you want from your business? That, now, that's a really important question to answer, and I think it's an easier question than asking, what do you want from life? So, what do you want from your business? Is it more money, more time, more fun, more control? Maybe it's all of those. All of those things, they boil down to one thing, more freedom. More freedom to do what you want to do. In all the work we've done with hundreds of business owners over the past 20 years, we see that this freedom comes in three categories or types, and it's, it's simple. There are really only three different things. Freedom to do what you love to do in your business without having to do all that stuff that you don't want to do. That's one type of freedom. Freedom to be calling in for the numbers from the British Virgin Islands. That's what I did, right? To be taking off and coming back three months later or something. Then the third is freedom to build your business's value so you can sell it. You can get this huge chunk of cash and retire comfortably. You did not start a business to be stressed out and controlled by it. You started a business so you could have more freedom. If, for example, the thought of taking a long vacation is stressful, I'm, and I mean a long vacation, three weeks, two months, maybe even a year, travel around the world with your family like I did, well, that's a little extreme, then you don't have the freedom you're searching for. If you can't go because all that you've worked for would fall apart if you were gone that long, or it's just not worth it because of the backlog of crap that would be waiting for you when you got back, well, what's the point? Really, what's the point of owning a business? Now, you might be saying that all this hard work and sacrifice that you're putting into your business, you know, this sweat equity is creating value. You're going to have something to sell someday, and then you'll have your freedom. I got news for you. Chances are nobody's going to want to buy your business when you're ready to sell it. I know. I've been there. I've done that. I told you the story. I didn't get what I wanted for my business. And if you are able to sell it, again, you won't get what you want for it. I mean, who would want your job? But more importantly, think of all the life you've lost while you were toiling away. If you started your business when you were in your late 20s or 30s, and you're grinding it out until you're in your late 60s or 70s, you've already lived the best part of your life. It's gone. It's over. But if it's easy to get away, if your business runs like a well-oiled machine, whether or not you're there, well, that business is it's worth a ton of money. And, it's, and it's, in fact, it's serving you. It's giving you what you want. And frankly, you probably don't need to sell it because it's giving you so much freedom. You're, you're living your life to the fullest. 
Okay, so how do you get that freedom? What characterizes a business that can run like a well-oiled machine? You know, there are tons of books on this topic. All of them talk about the importance and value of having standard operating procedures, but not one of them tells you how, how to create a process-dependent business. They all tell you that it's a really good idea, and it is a really good idea, but how? Well, that's what we do, and that's what we're going to show you. I'm going to give you some very practical how-to knowledge that will assist you with the creating a business into one that can run successfully like a well-oiled machine. One where you could be calling in for the numbers. So, like, how does that sound? So here's an action step you can take right now. There's a link on this page where you can download a complete set of process names. It's essentially a template for a general business. We've developed this list after working with hundreds and hundreds of different types of businesses in all types of industries. Now, your business will not need all of these processes, and your business will need some processes that are not on this list, but it's a great framework from which to start. It's a spreadsheet. There are four different worksheets in that spreadsheet. Each worksheet represents a different key function in your business. And each key function is organized into subcategories or subfunctions. Go through the list, delete the processes you don't need, and add any additional processes that you may think of as you're going through this exercise. So it's a great exercise. But more importantly, I'd love to hear from you. What are your challenges? Do you agree with what I'm saying? Do you have any questions about uh, implementing processes? Use the comment section below this video to let me know what's happening. Like, what are the three business freedom descriptions that strike a chord with you? Paint me a picture of what you want your business freedom to look like. This is Michael Mills from Business Design Corporation and the Touchstone Business System, and I will be seeing you again in the next couple of days.